try it cold, you bring it out of the fire, onto the anvil, on the little sheet metal,
Ruhl. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to take it out of the fire, cold as it is, in order to practice the movement. When you're nervous and you haven't practiced your movement, it will end up in a drop forge. It will, there will be disaster. There's nothing wrong with a little disaster, but always try your weldings cold. The, the mannerism and then you will be safe. You try it cold, you bring it out of the fire onto the anvil, on the little sheet metal, on you go and you tap it a few times once it's sticking towards the welding it sticks you put it back in the fire. When you come without this little sheet metal it will be difficult to know whether you're correctly placed. So if you don't use the little sheet metal, you might end up with a welding like that. And that must be avoided at all times. So you put the little sheet metal, you put it nicely level, and you have a proper welding. I recommend or I suggest you use a light hammer when you forge weld, a light hammer. The blows, have not to be too hard, but they have to be correct and they have to be fast. If you use a heavy hammer, it's too slow and sometimes too hard for the first time and it might uh, destroy your welding instead of making it stick. So I always use from about 800 gram, grams to one kilo. Yeah, slightly under two pounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is, uh, Mijn recommendatie, dat zal ik in Nederlands op. Dat mag. Dat ik in Nederlands praat voor. Ik begon toch al de verschillende dialecten. Ja, ja, ja. You start with the pieces nicely cooled off, because they're going to take so much heat till they are properly at welding heat. You might try to take them and you might burn yourself. I'm not used to use gloves, so I never recommend gloves. I, I, have, I lose my feeling, I lose my touch. So, you have a nicely clean fire, no clinkers, and lots of already gassed coal. At a soft blast, otherwise you burn the outside, but the proper thing to weld is actually, it starts melting from the inside and goes towards the outside. That's a proper welding heat. People mistake the little sparks they see for welding heat. Sometimes it's the opposite, it's just burning the metal. So you must at all times avoid that. You will see the difference between that old wrought iron and the iron we use today. We will leave it in the fire much longer and there will be a lot of sparks and then some people might think, oh he's burning the thing. Normally I don't, but it could happen. My fire is 15 centimeters deep so all the oxygen I'm blowing in with the blower is consumed by the coal and till it reads the iron it's all finished so I can't burn any iron. When you put your irons too deep they get too close to the blower and you get no result at all. We're using quartz sand with a fine grain. It's very important to have it clean and it's sprinkled on, not like borax, when it's uh, cherries red, we sprinkle it only on when the iron is nearly to melting point, when it starts sweating, like a piece of cheese you take out of the refrigerator. It's the same color. 
we sprinkle it on, not too much, not too, too, me, too uh, less, and then we take it out of the fire and normally it should work miracles. It should work miracles. Because it's a raw iron and it's the fine sand with the proper grain. And in French it said sable. For the Canadians watching from Quebec. <laughs> Thank you.